Lorenzo Benismagi, how first of all, how much can this really hurt if it goes ahead? How much can it hurt, you know, global trade and therefore world GDP? And uh, can Europe benefit because the Chinese being mad at the U.S. would put money in Europe instead of, uh, instead of uh, America? Well, it's called a trade war because you don't know where it, uh, where it ends. Uh, this is just the first step. So if uh, the thinking that will go on in the White House may lead to maybe calm down, that uh, the effects could be limited. But if there is really a war like uh, repercussions uh, uh, um, and, and countermeasures from Europe, this will lead to a situation where the world economy will be uh, certainly not in a better position and uh, investments, uh, I think, will slow down. So it's very difficult now to say whether what the Chinese will do, what the Europeans will do. But if we enter uh, a way of thinking that, uh, that what's the next step in terms of retaliation, I think that's, that's uh, uh, we're all going to be worse off, starting from the US, I think, who is a net importer. And uh, finally, if tariffs are put uh, on imports, uh, prices will go up for the US consumer. So I think they will have to think uh, hard about that. How, do we know how the president actually measures success? He looks at the stock market. If the stock market goes down, is that a, you know, a way of him stepping down from possible protectionist measures? He looks at cable news headlines. I, I, you know, I think that the reporting from the White House is pretty clear that, that that's his benchmark. I guess the stock market, you know, he likes to boast about that, but his moods wax and wane based on what uh, cable news reports about him. Um, Jim, I also want to ask you some of actually one of the most read stories on Bloomberg Terminal, which is uh, a former aide to Donald Trump, gets a subpoena from Mr. Mueller, and he says, no way, I'm just going to ignore it. You know, I have to say that the best thing I read about that was, uh, I believe, Bloomberg White House reporter Shannon Pettypiece tweeted that that is the uh, OJ's uh, white bronco stage of the Mueller Okay, <laughs> but so I think his exact quote, right, um, in an interview with us was, they want me in there for a grand jury on Friday. I'm not paying the money to go down there. I mean, what happens next? Does, does he get what happens arrested? Next is does he he'll get dragged he, there? What happens next is he'll back off, probably. If not, he goes to jail. Okay, the markets are very cool about everything at the moment. Are they a little bit too, too cool about political risk in the U.S.? Well, we'll know <laughs> we'll <laughs> in a few days <laughs> and in a few weeks. Yes, I think that uh, it's surprising. And um, I guess uh, everybody expects to be able to get out before everybody else uh, and, uh, and not lose when, the, when the, the, the news will come and will lead everybody to address the portfolios. So I think one should, should be very careful in looking at all these events uh, happening and, um, and uh, probably there is uh, complacency in the markets. But we have been saying this for for weeks and months and nothing happened, so... But is complacency because of algorithms and the, and the market function, or is complacency because we don't know how to price events that are out of the ordinary? Uh, partly it's, it's the case, partly uh, markets expect central banks to be there and to react in case uh, things go wrong. Um, partly the world economy is still doing relatively well, so I think we need a series of uh, a combination of political and economic uh, bad news to really start maybe the, a more serious adjustment. And this hasn't happened yet.